Hey, welcome back to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to use the cross-platform native plugins 2 inside Unity. For this lesson, we'll be going over how to use the native UI service. Now, before I begin, I'd like to tell you about our sponsor for this video, which is Boxabusters, who are the developers of the cross-platform native plugin. So if you haven't checked them out already, make sure that you do so. I've left links to their content in the description below. The native UI feature is one of the more simple features of the cross-platform native plugins. It simply allows us to show native dialog windows within our app. In the use cases section of the documentation, it talks about two principles that using this feature is good for. The first is to show dialogs. This allows you to alert and show information to the player. You can also get inputs through button clicks. The second principle is to allow users to pick date and time. This will give the player a calendar and clock dialog where they can pick a specific date and time. Now the setup for this feature is very simple. All we have to do is enable native UI in our essential kit settings. So inside Unity, I'll open up my essential kit settings and then I'll toggle on native UI. In the usage section, it shows us how to do alert dialogs and date pickers, but we'll need to create a new c -sharp script. So here I've created a new c -sharp script, which I've called IG underscore native UI and we'll go ahead and open it up. Now inside the script, we need to add two namespaces up at the top. The first is using voxelbusters.essentialkit, and the second is using system. We can then create two variables. The first is a singleton of the script, so I have public static, ig underscore native UI, and it's called instance. And our second variable is a public date time called current date time. Once you have the singleton, we need to initialize it. We'll do that within the start function. So I have instance equals this, the documentation then shows us how to create an alert dialog, and there's three parts to creating one. First, you need a title, a message, and then some buttons. So we'll copy the segment of code and go back to our script. I've then created a public void function that we'll be able to call from anywhere in our project using our singleton. This function is called show alert dialog, and I've added two parameters. The first is a string called title, and the second is a string called message. I've then pasted the code inside this function, and I've changed dialog.title to equal our title parameter, and dialog.message to equal our message parameter. Then whatever you want to have happen when the user clicks the yes button, you'll put inside these curly brackets under the add button function. Now to use this function in your project, it's very simple. All you have to do is call this function from anywhere in your project using the singleton of this script. And I've provided this example code, which is ig underscore native UI dot instance, which is our singleton dot show alert dialog. And I'm passing in our title string, which says, are you sure? And our message string, which says, would you like to proceed with this action? Now moving on to the date picker, there's three different dialogs that you can use. There's date, time, and date and time. So I'm going to copy this segment of code and we'll go back to our script. Here I have another public void function which I've called show date picker and I've just pasted in the code. On this first line of code, you can see where we're creating an instance of date picker and we're using the date mode. If I wanted to use one of the other two options, I would just have to change this enum. We then have two functions. One is set on value change and the other is set on close callback. And inside both these functions, we wanna set our current date variable equal to date for the first function and we need to cast it as a date time. And for the second function, we wanna set it to result.selectDateTime and we're casting as a date time as well. Now to use this function, it's the same thing. We have ig underscore native UI dot instance dot show date picker. This will prompt the user with the calendar to pick a specific date and time. And once they've made their selection, you'll then be able to access that value through our current date time variable. And here's our example code. But once you have all this code, we'll save it and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, I've created an empty game object, which I've named native UI manager, and I've attached my ig native UI script to it, We've then made a prefab out of this object, and then essentially wherever you want to have a native UI dialog box, you'll need to include this prefab in that scene. And then I've created a little demo for showing a dialog box, but not a date picker, as the custom UI collection doesn't have a value for the date picker prefab. Now if you wanted to, you could create this prefab and set this value, but this is just for showing the date picker within Unity. For this demo, I've created a little demo script. Inside this script, I just have one public function, which I've called dialog. Inside this function, I have ig underscore native UI, 
alert dialog. For the title, I'm passing in this is a test, and for the message, I'm passing in do you like my demo. With this, we can go back to Unity. I've attached my demo script to a UI canvas. I then have a UI button, and for the unclick of this button, I've set it to my demo script, and I've used the drop down menu to go to demo native UI and dialog. From here, you can test out our project. And by simply clicking on this button, you can see that we have a new pop-up window that says, this is a test, do you like my demo? Then has a no button and a yes button. If I click the yes button, dialog box goes away. Now the dialog box that we saw was a prefab for working inside Unity. If you were to build your project for one of the two mobile platforms, you would see a different dialog box that fits each platform. Now that's everything that we're gonna cover in this lesson on how to use the native UI service if you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos.